Okay, so this is a great topic, a very fascinating topic, but I'm curious, what got you interested in it? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a question that really we all ask at some point in our lives, right? What happens after we die? Uh, so for me, in 2012, my brother-in-law was killed in a car wreck. And, you know, I've been a filmmaker for about 15 years now. Um, grew up a, in a Christian home, went to church all my life. But at that point in my life, I, you know, I was really uh, faced with the, that reality of, you know, that question, what happens after we die? And so I just, I wanted to know, you know, I, I grew up with this belief in, in heaven and that I would, you know, see him again, but it was really traumatic to have no goodbyes. And so while I believe that I'm going to see him again, I wanted to know if there was some evidence to kind of back that up. So that's when I came across these stories of people who had clinically died, you know, and come back and had these experiences. Oh, fascinating. So, okay, so you had this experience in your own life. You had these questions. Yeah. So how did that develop into a full feature film? So, you know, originally, I think I, I read something like 30 books on the topic. And um, I just, you know, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, of course, the medium of film. And so I wanted to see what there was out there. I just wanted to, you know, the books were interesting, but I wanted to see, you know, these people and, and hear their voices. And I wasn't finding anything like that out there. Um, and so that was kind of what sparked the, the original, you know, interest in, you know, maybe I should go out and, and tell these stories. So I actually connected with John Burke, who wrote the book Imagine Heaven. It just came out, I think it was 2016. And he did a wonderful job of just kind of like showing um, from a very high level perspective, you know, all of these near-death experiences happening around the world and how they overlap and point people towards God and towards heaven. Yeah, well, obviously, you touched a really uh, important subject because many people have watched this film. Just to tell us a little bit about how the film is gaining traction and what's happened as a result of launching it. Yeah, so we hit theaters October 27th, and it was a wide release, which is really unusual for a documentary. Um, so because it's it was a documentary, it became uh, it was a top top three all time documentary release. We were releasing over 2,700 screens across Canada and the United States. Um, and we sold over a million tickets, so which actually put the, the film to become, it, it became the highest grossing uh, faith documentary of all time. So, you know, the, the response was, you know, amazing. But I think more importantly, uh, you know, for me, was hearing the response of people who've watched it and hadn't considered, you know, heaven at all before, hadn't considered any kind of spiritual reality before. And they became kind of gripped with this question and then they were pondering it and then people were coming to Christ from it or people were renewing their faith from the from the film so that was that was the best part that that is amazing uh, congratulations on on really great work uh, and again I love the fact that we're you're trying to connect the science of it because I think sometimes in faith circles or in secular circles they think faith and science don't really go together especially when it comes to right. things that we can't really see or experience firsthand so you exactly. uh, you you engaged a lot of experts tell us about some of those experts that you feature actually in this film yeah, so we interviewed uh, neuroscientists, multiple neuroscientists, uh, neurosurgeons, um, cardiologists, uh, you know, surgeons and, and doctors, just to kind of get an idea of, you know, what's happening on the medical side, what's happening on, on the science side of, of this. And so, yeah, while we can't send cameras and, and go explore, you know, what happens in the spiritual realm, um, we there is a part of near-death experience that you actually can verify. And that was a big kind of part of the film that we want to explore and unpack. There's a cardiologist who we, we feature in the film. He didn't believe uh, that these near-death experiences were true. He didn't think they were they're real. But what he found through any of his own patients was after these people were clinically dying for a period of time, it means no heartbeat, no brain activity, no breathing, um, and they were brought back, uh, some of them would start describing things that they saw in the resuscitation efforts. And they, they got really particular. So this started in the 1960s, where there's not really kind of like any, uh, you know, there's no television shows on, on, on uh, you know, what happens in an operating room. And yet they're describing with extreme detail and extreme accuracy all the things that happened during that resuscitation effort. And then this was also happening with people, you know, outside of the hospital in car accidents and plane crashes. And, and uh, so the, the verifiable part of the near-death near experience is the things that they saw that were happening in this world that can later be corroborated. And so we have a, a bunch of those cases in the film. That's fascinating. And I guess as you were exploring and researching for this movie, 
uh, what were some mm. of the things you uh, just realized in your own, on, on your own? Because for me, it's like, I'm, I'm always fascinated. What, what, what do you think the purpose of these, you know, near-death experiences or after-death experiences are? What, why does God allow them to happen, do you think? I think it's all happening because it's just, it's just pointing people to God. I think the whole thing, I mean, we kind of summarize this at, at, towards the end of the film through one character who is a former Buddhist and grew up in South Korea. And he had an experience that did overlap with a lot of people, what they're experiencing in North America. So this isn't just a North and American thing. Um, but, and he had become a Christian after his experience. And he says that he believes that they're happening all around the world in all different cultures, all different backgrounds, because, you know, God is wanting us to seek him in the process. And I think all of these things are just kind of helpful little textures to point us toward God. It doesn't replace the Bible, certainly not. And, I would advocate that you don't, you don't make a theology based off of anyone's near-death experience because they're all little glimpses of right. you know, what comes next, just little tiny glimpses. And I think it just kind of gives us tremendous hope mm-hmm. and, and knowing that there is you know, life after, that we are going to be reunited in, in heaven with God. I love that because all of these things point to the fact that there is a God who gives us incredible hope in a world that can be really, really difficult. So you talked a little bit about the science, but was there anything about the science of these experiences that surprised you or engaged you in a new way? Yeah, I mean, so there's two things that are really kind of astounding in the film. One is that we actually don't only have heavenly experiences, we also include hellish accounts. So there's three people in the film who had hellish near-death experiences, and, and it's an aspect that usually isn't covered in film, typically is not covered in books. Um, it's kind of shied away from because, you know, it's like, it's a difficult thing to explore, but it's a reality of what people's experiences are. And then there's also, um, yeah, the scientific part of it. So I kind of alluded to that earlier, but there's one case that's, uh, that makes, I think, a really strong, very strong case that it even convinced neurosurgeons that didn't believe that there is something after. There's this case of Pam Reynolds where she's clinically put under for over an hour all the blood is removed from her brain during this really experimental surgery and is sort of like in the, in the nineties. And, um, it's basically she has a, she has an aneurysm in the brain. So they, they have to, you know, repair that. The only way to do it is to just deflate the, the, the head essentially from blood. So, but think about it, the physical, the physical nature of the brain cannot create, it cannot function and it can't create new memory without blood, obviously. Right. So, and she's also put under heavy anesthesia, her eyes are taped shut. She has these clicks in her ears. So she's physically completely removed from the environment. She is clinically dead also. Uh, they, they on purpose stop her heart for over an hour. And then they try and bring her back successfully after a couple of different um, attempts. They bring her back online. The surgery was a success, but she sees all of what happened during that time that, that she was offline. And then she, and she talks about it you know, what they were saying, what they were doing, the problems that occurred during the surgery, the, the music that was playing in the auditorium that she thought was really insensitive. She didn't like that they were laughing and saying these different things, which, mm-hmm. you know, they they were shocked and they, they had to look back and thought, oh my goodness, like this is medical malpractice. We weren't looking at the the transcript of, of the, the, the brain. The brain was being monitored with uh, to see if there's any activity. And they went back and looked at it. It's completely flat. You know, she also sees uh, an angel and she's, you know, brought towards heaven, but she's told it's not her time. She has to go back. She re-enters her body. But it's the it's the vertical side to the near-death experience, the things that she saw in the operating room that were verified by the neurosurgeon who actually conducted the surgery. You know, it's it's like, what do you make of that? <laughs> well, I make it that it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And again, I know many watching are going to be curious. Is there like a common theme uh, that people see or experience that kind of unites uh, our faith to the stories found in the Bible and the truth of what we believe in? Yeah, so um, more often than not, people uh, meet what, who they call Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so, it, and and when I ask the question, it's like, how do you know, how do you know is Jesus, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, Mary, who's in the film, she she wrote this book, uh, To Heaven and Back. She, she's, she had drowned. Uh, in a kayaking accident, she talks about, you know, seeing Jesus, which is very common for people, again, across across the globe. And she's like, well, I wouldn't have to, you know, my husband of 40 years, I, I don't have, when he comes in the door, I, I comes home from work, I don't have to say, you know, who are you? I know exactly <laughs> who he is. It's just, you know, you just know, it's my, that's my husband. Hmm. So in the same way, 
these people are just like, this is, oh, this is Jesus. This is the creator of the universe. This is God. And so, and, you know, and, and it's both like this terrifying yet loving image. So it's this man made of light who they say is like, his eyes are like, like the burning of a thousand suns. So they feel like if they physically were standing before him, they would be incinerated because they're just not, they can't, they're, you know, he's, he's holy and they're, they're not ready to meet him. And yet in his presence, you know, after, after death for this kind of in-between state, um, it's nothing but love. He said it's unconditional love. And it's a love that they've never experienced here on earth. Um, they don't have words to describe. You know, in English, we have one word for love, but that's a love that doesn't exist here on earth. It's un unconditional. And uh, that's a common element from people all around the world. Um, they also have what they call life review where they're shown their entire life uh, up to the point of death and the choices that they made and where that kind of brought them. They're kind of shown like a, a high level perspective of, of the choices and decisions that they made in their life and how that impacted people around them. I love that. Because uh, again, I mean, you just read the Bible, these images are there everywhere that there's a God who is all powerful and yet all yeah. loving. And yes, we yeah. are accountable, but when we trust in him, he receives us, he loves us. That is such a beautiful yeah. image. Uh, we just have a few moments left, but uh, my last question is, what do you hope that audiences will take away after watching this great documentary? Well, my hope is that, and the reason why I made it as well, is like I, I want people to experience what I experienced in you know, reading these books. And it gave me a lot of hope. It renewed my faith. It restored my faith because I was asking difficult questions that wasn't I wasn't sure, you know, it's like, this is what I was raised to believe. This is a hope that I have. I realized how shallow my faith was, I guess, at the point when I was asking these questions. And my hope is that, you know, people who are maybe struggling in asking these questions, that they can be reassured that there is life after death. And and for people that haven't considered any kind of reality of life after, you know, death, that this film could kind of, you know, tip them towards that, that hopefully it kind of cracks open that door. And I, I would just encourage Christians, especially to bring non-Christians to watch this film, you know, sit down with them and, and, and watch this film. It's a great sort of conversation opener. And I think it gives a lot of hope. Well, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for making it. And thank you for being with us today and sharing this. I uh, really appreciate your time today.